Hey guys, it's Lori. So, um, are you missing someone? Are you grieving a death, um, a divorce? Uh, is someone you love gone? Whether it be through death or divorce, are they gone? And you're missing them. I know that, you know what, and it doesn't matter how long they've been gone. People, I know this is like one of the number one complaints that, that some of my clients say is people expect others to just just move on. Um, it's been enough time now, whether it's been, you know, three months, six months, three years, whatever. We all grieve at our own pace. And you know what? If you lose someone, you never stop missing them. <clears throat> time doesn't make the pain go away. And I think telling somebody that is doing them a disservice, is making them think, okay, well, it's not going away for me. So, I, I mean, I people will tell you, um, everybody's different. Everybody's different. And the, the, the grief and the pain shifts and changes, but it's always there. That's okay. That doesn't mean you're unhealthy. Um, if it's, if it's paralyzing you, if it's keeping you from moving forward and it has been some time, you know what, even if it hasn't, if you are to a point where you can't function, you do need to talk to someone. You can call someone like me or you can go into um, a, a psychiatrist. Um, I mean, someone like me, I can't prescribe you medicine or anything. I can just help you through different exercises, through talk. What I do is a little bit different than counseling. It's not like we would just sit and talk, um, although we would, but um, there's different exercises. There's different spiritual um, exercises, meditations, prayer, that kind of thing. And one thing I did notice is regardless of the situation, whether it be divorce, death, um, if somebody is gone, uh, maybe they're in the military or maybe they're in prison. And I'm not comparing these. I mean, somebody listening might say, well, it's not the same. I'm just talking about missing someone and grieving them. You know, when people die, it's, it's devastating. Um, divorce is devastating. When somebody you love goes away and you can't, change that situation it's devastating it's all different i'm not saying they're the same but they're all i mean it's grief it's grieving all um regardless of why and i'm going to give you some tips on the holidays and how to kind of get through them and actually this goes for anybody who's down around the holidays it, it, i mean many of them will pertain specifically to a loved one but, um, but you know what, there are people that struggle with the holidays anyway, even if, even if life is good, they kind of struggle with the holidays. I mean, there are different reasons why people struggle. I, I deal with, I have the holiday assistance program and that's for people that are poverty stricken. And some of the people I deal with are truly poverty stricken. They're not just, hey, we're having a bad year and I can't really afford stuff, but yet my, you know, I have a home and I have a, a you know, whatever, a car and not those kind of people. The people I deal with are um, homeless or they're in uh, battered women's or battered people shelters. Uh, it's not all women. Actually, that bothers me when people think it's, all women because when men get battered or abused in any way they have also on top of that the um, stigma attached to it so a lot of men don't say anything but these are the people that I deal with that's why you know I've had people because I've had a personal rough road recently uh, been massively under attack and people have said to me are you still gonna help those people because I did in in November by the grace of God praise God I was able to help with food baskets and that's definitely through God because there it, it I still don't know how it was possible um, that's I made a commitment to these people and this year I didn't put it out there they came to me 
and I actually had to put a stop to it because it was out of control. But what, and I made a, a promise. Well, I made a commitment. I didn't, like I said, I didn't put it out there this year. This is people that or had heard about it, known about it in years past. Um, and I, I said I would. So what I've decided to do is delegate most of it. Each year I do that. And each year I get, yeah, I'll help, and then people don't. So um, if you're interested in a family, let me know. Uh, many people say they want a family and then they don't do it. That's why I'm asking for cash donations if you have it. If you don't, that's fine too. I don't, I don't, I'm not here to talk about that. Um, but yeah, if you want to donate, that's perfect. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, Okay, so it's the holidays, you're down, you're missing someone. And like I said, I'm going to specifically talk about missing someone, but it, this can pertain to anything um, if you're having a struggle through the holidays. So just a couple things that you can do to get you through it, because you know what? The holidays are going to happen. Just uh, what is, whether it's what, Kwanzaa, um, Hanukkah, Christmas, the winter solstice, whatever it is, that you normally traditionally celebrate, it's still going to happen. There's still going to be the decorations out in public. There's still going to be uh, people on their Facebook and Google Plus and all the different Twitter, social media that are posting all kinds of parties and happy things. Maybe you're at work and there's parties there. Um, it's still going to go on. And sometimes that can compound your feelings of grief because what happens your mind, even though you know it's not true, if you think about it, you tend to start focusing and saying, look, at everybody else in the world is happy. My life is stopped. I'm going through this incredible pain. And the rest of the world is just going on. So it compounds that, that um, the pain, the feeling of loneliness, the feeling of emptiness. That's normal, okay? Don't think it's not normal. And if you are at a point of suicide, please, please, please reach out. Please. Please. Because suicide isn't necessarily going to get you to your loved ones. Suicide is not necessarily going to solve your problem. We can talk about suicide in another video. But please, if you're feeling that way, reach out, okay? Um, one thing I noticed is, you know, with the people that I talk to, I have deep faith. Um, I wasn't always, I, okay. I, I always believed. Okay. But I wasn't always a follower. I wasn't, I, I was not close to the Lord. You know, I thought I was, I thought I knew, but I didn't. Um, so, but I know that when bad things happen, when unexpected deaths or even expected deaths, um, divorce, um, betrayal, um, any of any of these things happen, if you don't have faith to cling to, I don't know how people get through it. Um, I know we will get through it. I, like I said, there have been times in my life before I truly knew God and I did get through it. But when you have faith and you have that to cling to, I'm not going to say you don't have the pain because of course you do. But, and I can see it in my clients, the ones who do and the ones that don't. There's a difference in the healing process. So consider it if you have, no, if you don't know now, um, or if you're stuck in a, um, like a ritualistic, um, religion or something. If you want to talk about it privately, please email me, message me. Um, I'm here for you. So one thing that you can do, like I said, it's going to go on, um, regardless of how you're feeling. So one thing that you can do is acknowledge to yourself and to others when you're talking about it, that this year is going to be different. This year you're hurting, or maybe it's been a couple years, whatever, but these holidays, this season is going to be different. Your loved one is not there with you. You are feeling lonely. It's going to be different. It's going to be different, and it's probably going to be tough. So acknowledge that to yourself. But keep telling yourself, hey, this day is going to come, and it's going to go. This season is going to come, and it's going to go. And I'm going to get through it. 
The next thing is, is if you have a support system, lean on them. I know some people say, no, I don't want to um, impose on anybody. If these people love you, they understand, lean on them. Don't allow the spirit of pride to take over and be like, no, I can't tell anybody anything or whatever. Don't allow that to happen. Lean on the people that love you. Be honest with them and be honest with yourself. A lot of times we have people in our lives that, that say things like, um, oh yeah, just move on. It, you know, if it's a divorce, oh, he or she, she was a jerk anyway. Or if it's a passing, yes, we know, but come on, just, you know, just get over it, basically. They say it in a nicer way, but those aren't the people that you want to um, have as your support system. And there's nothing wrong, I'm not saying to end a friendship or a relationship, but there's nothing wrong with being straight up and honest with these people and saying, no, I am grieving and this year is going to be different and I'm just, I'm trying to prepare myself for that and I would like your support. And if they can't do that, nothing says that you have to be with certain people, right? Um, decide what you want to change and decide what you want to keep the same. Um, do you, you know, sometimes and decide where you want to be, who you want to be with and what you're going to do, what traditions are you keeping? What are you changing? You know, and discuss it with the people that you're going to be with. Um, maybe it'll be too painful to be in the same place as always. Maybe it'll be too painful to do the same traditions as always. Um, maybe it'll be better. It'll give you comfort either way. There's no right or wrong. Just discuss it, know it, have your plan of action, you know. Um, maybe you want to go away somewhere different and um, have everybody meet somewhere else. Another thing is maybe you're not in the mood to give gifts or exchange gifts. Let people know that. Why don't you make an agreement with people? Hey, this year we're not doing any gifts and stick to it. So many times people say this year we're not doing gifts and then they do gifts if somebody's grieving and they're hurting and they say, truly, I don't want to do gifts, then don't do gifts. The best gift you can give them is to do what they need. Um, whatever it is, um, be open and honest, okay? Remember that not everyone will grieve exactly the same. So there may be somebody that was very close to that person as well. In the case of like um, maybe a spouse, whether it be divorce or death, maybe you have children or grown children, grandchildren, and they're grieving as well, but their grief is different. Recognize that their grief is different, that they respond differently. Don't judge their grief and hopefully they won't judge your grief, you know? Be honest with each other. Maybe now some people will want to maybe leave a seat for that person um, at a table or, or whatever. Um, for some people that would be too painful. But um, Or maybe you want to put like a little um, uh, memorial together for that person. Another good idea is to have a place set aside, whether it be a notebook or little pieces of paper, um, where you want to write some memories about that person. Put them all in a box and decide on a time when you want to get together and kind of share those stories. Um, for some people that would be too painful and that's okay too. Um, and people say, well, that's kind of weird in a divorce situation. Not if you're a family and the spouse is gone, the parent is gone, even if it's in a divorce situation. Maybe, and I don't mean to sit around and do a bitch session, but maybe you might want to do the memories anyway, just of Christmas past or whatever, you know. Um, cook a special dish of theirs, or maybe like if it's your mom or dad that crossed over or a spouse that they like to cook, try cooking their dish. And don't worry if you don't get it right. Um, you know what? Another thing is you might want to nix the holidays all together. That's okay. If you're truly doing it because that's what you truly want to do. Not because you're just so lost in depression that you can't bring yourself to get up. If that's the case, please force yourself to get up and 
talk to a loved one, talk to somebody, get your support system. Um, but if you truly just don't want to do it, you want to celebrate very quietly, or you want to pretend that the day isn't happening, that's okay. You have that right to do that. Plan it ahead. Let people know about it so they're not worried about you. Maybe you want to do it together. That's okay, too. Maybe you want to postpone it and do it in Christmas in July or whatever. You know, that's okay, too. Um, if it's really, really bad, reach out to somebody. Reach out to a counselor or a therapist or a psychiatrist, psychologist. Um, Another thing you can do is do something in your loved one's honor, in, in their name, like uh, go volunteer somewhere or donate something or take maybe a gift that you would have normally bought for them and donate it um, and use their name, do it in their honor. Or maybe a charity that they loved, put together a little fun, have everybody give to that charity in their name. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can honor somebody like that. What I, I guess what I'm trying to say is there is no right or wrong. Some people, some people don't want to mention it when somebody faces a tragedy, especially around the holidays. They, they kind of walk on eggshells. Um, should I or shouldn't I say anything? Should I laugh? Should I be happy? Um, that's another thing. And if you're enjoying yourself, that's okay. That's okay. If somebody else is enjoying themselves and you're like, well, I guess they don't miss them too much. Not necessarily true. Like I said before, people grieve differently. It's okay to enjoy family and friends. It doesn't mean that you didn't care about the other person. Some people choose, like say you lost your spouse. Some people choose to remain single for a very long time if not forever and other people need to reach out and have someone in their life and so many people are under the misconception that if you do that you didn't care about the person that's now gone that's simply not true that's simply not true um you might want to you know uh like i said make a little um memorial in honor of that person um i like the idea of the stories about the person for some it may be too painful <sighs> these are just a few ideas i'm sure there's other things but the and you know what stay off social media you don't have to look at what everybody's doing especially Sometimes people can be very cold. When you reach out on social media and say you're sad or say you need something, I've experienced myself. People ignore you. The very people that say they care about you ignore you. And I think a lot of times they do it because they don't know what to say. Other people do it because they don't want to help you. And so they figure it's easier just to not acknowledge it. Other people, and people, please, this is the worst. Well, it's some of the worst from what people have told me, my clients. One thing, the walking on eggshells and not mentioning the person, that's painful to people. It's okay to mention the person. Um, you might want to play it by ear and not go on and on and on. But it is okay to honor somebody. It's absolutely okay to do that. In fact, people who love somebody and they're not there want their loved one to be remembered and honored. So walking on eggshells, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, giving somebody a hug and saying, I miss him or her too. Uh, I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to do. I'm very sorry, but I'm here. There's nothing wrong with saying that. It's better than saying nothing or pretending it didn't happen or ignoring the person. And all of a sudden you don't want, you don't take their phone calls. You don't want to go see them, you know. When people are hurting, they need people and people tend to pull away. When people need money, they need people and people tend to pull away. We tend to be so selfish with our time, with our money, with our emotions. We need to reach out and help other people. That's another thing, like I said, you could do is go help somebody else. Sometimes that helps us. I know a lot of times, and if you can, if you're still so lost in the grief, maybe it's not a good idea. But if you can, 
I know that's one of the number one ways to begin to heal is to go help another person. Maybe not, you, maybe you're not ready to go help somebody who's also lost somebody. Maybe you're not ready for that. But maybe whatever your loved one's favorite cause was. You know, um, you will get through this holiday, okay? You will. I know the holidays are supposed to be wonderful and, you know, like the Hallmark Channel and some people's Facebook pages and Twitters and all that, um, make it look like, you know, it's, it's a magical season. And I, I remember when my kids were little, it was a magical season. Even when we were completely broke, it was just a magical season. But it doesn't always feel that way. In fact, like I said, it can feel the exact opposite if you're hurting. You know what? For those people that aren't hurting, just going about normal life, please keep in mind that there are people that are out there. Don't patronize them. Don't patronize them. Don't ignore them. Lend a helping hand. And if you are one of the hurting, God bless you. You'll get through this. And if you need something, if you need to talk, whatever it is, reach out to someone. Like I said, if you don't have anyone and there are people in the world that have no one, I completely understand that. I have my the family I created. I don't have family. Um, so I get the alone thing. I get that. Reach out to someone like me. It doesn't have to be me. It could be somebody like me. Okay? That's another thing you can do. Last thing. Um, and there's more. But these are just a few suggestions. If you don't have someone, start looking now. Um... Is there some kind of support group or something going on throughout the holidays? Is there a church that's doing something like 24-7? Um, is there like a grieving group? Is there a, um, a divorce group? Is there something like that? Go on out. Check it out now. Give yourself some time. Meet the people first or whatever. Maybe it'll just kind of take your mind off it. Or put your mind into it and allow you to celebrate. Um the lives, the lives, the memories. Look back on the good times. Try not to dwell on the pain. Look back on the good. And remember, you're not alone. There is another realm that we, we don't die. We are energy. Energy cannot die. We change form. We lose this physical body. And we move on. And if it's a divorce situation, you'll get through it. You will. Rejection sucks, but you'll get through it. All right, guys. You have a good December. And reach out and help someone today. All right, take care.